I am heading outside to um, propagate some moms, move a red twig dogwood, and a few other things. But where I left off, when the sun came out, I elevated the lemon tree, put a couple plants in the pot, so its canopy is now up here, which is perfect. And I needed to elevate the mandevilla. There was a plant stand outside in front of my greenhouse that worked perfect for that. And then I noticed the sun was coming through the bottom, which is very helpful for the sun to not be blocked by all the pots. I have some soil pots ready for propagations. I did a few and I just filled more holes with soil. So I'm going to do the mums. Give it a go. On this side, this pot's about gone and I have flowers that are coming up that are not going, snapdragons, these are not going to um, bloom and be happy for the whole winter in this pot. So I'm going to cut it back, take the snapdragons out and put them in the bucket and carry them to greenhouse two. And then just put some soil on top of there as mulch. See, nothing on this side needs to be done. That looks good. This side, I have a boxwood. Uh, everything, this is the newest garden. I call this the shrub garden. It's all shrubs for the most part, give or take. But everything was really small when I planted this garden. And I knew I was gonna have to change things and move things as it grew in. Dogwood, the red stem dogwood, is too close to the bamboo. I have another bamboo here that's not doing well, but my goal was a bamboo wall backdrop for my side of the garden. And then winter interest, I bought on sale. It was in a pot. It was looking terrible the next year, so I put it in the ground. It needs to be moved to the front. So I'm going to move that. As I'm walking around, I'm just seeing all sorts of little things that need to be done. These Anirondack chairs are new, and I really like them. I don't know if they're hanging around. My daughter does resale, so they're probably been posted for sale for the local pickup because they're big and chunky. Fever few. They have really held their own. And marshmallow still standing. Catmint still standing. Still have oregano. I was picking off the oregano and taking it to the chickens. I did a, an herb collection on that cold, wet, windy day when I checked on them. I picked herbs along the way. This is pretty. Think of vine. I cleaned a bunch of it out because it can't get invasive. It's a ground cover if you allow it. I was choking things out, so I pulled a bunch, and but I left everything along the edge there. That's new. Richard St. Pierre did that for me, that wall. 
when they moved from the farm, they had things that they wanted to relocate. And the big stones for this wall was one of the things that he was needing to keep and reuse. So he redid this for me quite some time ago. And when he took out the old wall, it had a lot of growth in it. And I was so sad to see all that go because I like the look of it. But now look at it. It's all back. It all looks good. I love it. Found a spot for the Snapdragon. Now the things on the outside closest to the walls don't do as well as the things in the middle. That's why my herbs are in the middle of the garden. I tucked in a pansy. My last trip to the farm center. So we got a pansy, snapdragon, and down here I have a chamomile, looks like the mice have been chewing on it. Oregano. The smells of the herbs are supposed to make the mice unhappy enough to stay out of here. I still have some beans, but I had a good bunch of them down there and now I don't see the other one is on this side some bunching onions green onions I've been just cutting the tops off which I just did a few more on the other side I had to pull radishes out from this spot, which is fine. I'm okay with pulling them early. Some young end. So I started topping these onions over here. They were just spilling over in my way. Bok choy is not something that I've grown a lot of, but I did just make stir fry. And I did have this in the fridge when I was cooking. So... Yeah, it's good, but I don't know if that will be something that will survive in here the whole winter because it's, from what I've heard from other gardeners, it's not like super hardy. Like, for instance, this. Is that mustard green? See how the herbs are in the middle. And, a, you know, a few odds and ends tucked around. That catmint back there. Of course, the calendula is shining bright. So, the celery is another thing that won't last the whole winter. It will. When it gets down to the single digits, below 10 Fahrenheit, those, will, those won't still be in here. The onion tops will die back at some point, so I might as well keep harvesting, harvesting them before it gets that cold. But the onion bulbs themselves will come back when it warms back up. Okay, chicken. Yeah, I leave the gate open there. Some happy chickens. He doesn't know how to get out. Goofy chicken. Got another one back here. Can't see him, he's hiding under the Brussels sprouts. There he is, that's Chilo making all that racket. Got a happy couple of roosters. Fun, fun, fun. I'm not gonna worry about it, honestly. It is, uh, I think, November 10th. Got a couple jobs done. Oh, I need to cut up and plant the mums. Grab my tools. I left my rooting hormone in the house yesterday. Cat's got another one of my daughter's palm trees. It's an intensive care in my care.
she I am cutting above the node I'm stripping the bottom and I am using rooting hormone and I've never done mums before but I've done a lot of propagating and when I started I wasn't hugely successful it took a couple years before I really got my break. Something worked out. That was uh, hydrangeas. The smooth hydrangeas. Which I have a lot of now. And I don't winter them in pots. I winter them after I've successfully rooted a hydrangea. They go in the garden. So they're all over and some of them are getting old and my plan was to sell some off at some point. But yeah, it's worth a go. The smoke tree, I have tried to propagate a bunch of times and it hasn't worked out for me. And I stuck some wind damage cuttings in water and then I got busy and forgot about them. When I went back, they were rooted but dried out, meaning it worked in water, but because I wasn't paying attention, they dried out after they rooted. So, I had a, a, an arrangement of branches from my garden in my room when I was sick. And when I got rid of them, which was yesterday, I put them in water in here to see if I could duplicate that process. One more, and I think that's going to be it for these. I ran out of soil yesterday when I was saving the palms. Um, I got a bonus yesterday from Rick whenever he does side work and gets a big check or gets a big load of cash I usually get a bonus so yeah I'm looking forward to going somewhere where I can get some more potting soil and some more kind of winter interest things for the garden These tall cuttings in, in the middle, what I started with, is salvia, which I've also never done before. That was weeks ago, and they still look green. While I was puttering around the house, I trimmed up the bottom of my lemon tree. Just brush. I left the top. I cleaned up my tropicanas and accidentally cut off a good piece. So this, last time I was trimming my lemon tree, I propagated this one. So this has been in here, I don't know, weeks. And I'm going to add to it. This is my propagation area. And that is the only propagation in there at the moment. It's warm enough for now to leave them outside. When I bring them in the house, I'm going to have to put them in a brown paper bag for insulation. All the empty pots are... They're just set up because, of course, I'm going to propagate. What do I have in there? That is a cherry, knacking cherry. Only one of my knacking cherries took. So I need more of them. I don't know if a clone of the same plant is the same as having two plants, which you need for cherries. And what's back there? That is... Am I going to think of it? I'll show it to you on the way out. I don't know if you can tell by looking at it, but I cut this back. And I might cut it back again. So that's what those propagations are. Did I tell you a hundred times this year how much I loved my new cottage garden? It's finally starting to look like a cottage garden. The daisies are starting to bloom, which they usually do like late and early 
these daisies will do wonderful early in the spring. So I have a border of a good sized thick border now because they've reseeded of these English daisies. <laughs> 